Now, going through the uh, the settings of the DDGI volume real quick, I just want to note them so you have a, a good sense for what's on the GI volume itself. Just stepping down through the list, you have a control to enable the volume right at the top. Uh, the GI volume is scriptable, so in Blueprint scripts, you can enable and disable it. We have uh, two functions for setting the priority, update priority and lighting priority. And um, uh, these are if you... Uh, need if you have if you have multiple volumes in the scene and you want to make sure that one volume uh, takes priority over another, you can change its uh, lighting priority. Update priority makes that volume more important to update than other volumes. So this just gives you a, a way to um, further fine tune uh, their uh, how they're applied to the scene and the the, the frequency at which they're updated. Blending distance controls, um, what does it do at the edge of the volume and how it might blend either into the scene or against other volumes. The default is 20 Unreal units. Of course, you can uh, set this to whatever you wanted. If I set it to 2000, you can see that it's, it's, it's going to blend, it's probably only going to apply in a very small area in the middle because it, it, it's a 2000 value in all directions, including vertically, where it's shortest. So you know as i fiddle with this number you can see you know more and more oh whoops <laughs> as i fiddle with that number you can see more and more it's uh you know uh blending gi into the scene a little bit differently and maybe for aesthetic reasons that's what you want this the advantage to uh, this this blending distance values it's a way to sort of it can be from an aesthetic standpoint a way to synthetically um, add a little bit more uh, uh, darkness and shadow to your to your uh, GI scene if you if you like clear probes gives you a way to uh, reset the probe data so if for any reason whatsoever anything about the the probes in a volume uh, becomes uh, incorrect. You just want to manually flush it for any reason. We provide this clear probes button. Runtime static is a very cool option. This uh, gives you the ability to uh, save off the the GI you see in the scene and um, uh, run it at the maximum performance level. It'll even work on non-ray tracing hardware. Um, so if I set this to runtime static, that's all I have to do. Now I have static GI. It won't reflect that way in the editor um, just here. Uh, if I go to my stat GPU again, I'll see that I have an RTX GI update cost. So it's still dynamic here in the editor. But when I do a play in editor, that RTX GI update cost goes away. And I'm only paying for the apply lighting cost, which in this case is very, very low. Now you can see, of course, I've got a, a dynamic sunlight right that's rotating around the scene and so the the gi it's not updating every frame anymore uh this like i said this can be perfect if you're if you want maximum performance and you don't need that gi to refresh so stepping through this a bit more rays per probe describes uh how many gi rays are fired from each probe point per frame so by default, we say, you know, 288, that's a good number. Most scenes, you don't need to change this. You can go um, higher, um, but at more cost. Uh, so th this will cost you more performance to uh, raise this value, but you can offset that by, um, in your project settings, you know, having a, a reasonable probe update ray budget in, in here. Now, uh, we do have a tooltip on here that gives you a good sense of how to make this calculation. You might find that with a very large number of probes, like I have them uh, here in the scene with a high uh, raise per probe, that you, you will need to set this number up uh, to something much bigger um, in order to uh, 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 make sure you're, you're properly budgeting for um, all the rays that you're firing. But I think that you'll find most of the time you don't need to mess with this number too much. You might find that maybe just uh, doubling it to 576 is good. Or in some cases, actually bringing it, you can, you can, you'll find that you can actually get away with uh, less rays than you need. And really, I mean, this is pretty logical. 
you know, the less rays you're firing, uh, the faster your updates are going to be, uh, uh, the more uh, performant in general you're going to be. It may not increase your frame rate, but it certainly doesn't hurt and it sort of alleviates the system a little bit. Uh, probe counts we talked about, that's how dense your, your uh, probe points are within that volume. Uh, and this right here represents the maximum possible because uh, it creates a 16K texture. That's the maximum size texture for any system. Uh, the max ray distance determines how far the, uh, the probes will, will trace away from their, their point. Um, now, you can get a, a very small performance gain, very small, uh, by setting this down. Let's just hypothetically set it to 1,000. But at some point, you will start to, you know, it'll, it'll, you'll lose quality. Uh, uh, the probes will fail to consider distant objects like sky objects. Um, and, and so you may not want to mess with this too much. And uh, we can look at the literal cost of that. So if I leave it at the default 100,000 and I'm looking at my, uh, my RTX GI update costs here, that's where, where it'll impact. So it's, it's about 0.6 milliseconds. Let's just take a couple of zeros off the end. Set that down can see that it, you know, maybe reduced it by a small amount, maybe, a, you know, a 20th of a millisecond. Um, but the, uh, uh, the yeah, the, the, the savings are usually very, very nominal. Um, in fact, if you want RTX GI to consider distant sky geometry, you may find that you actually want to increase the number. So let's add two zeros to it. And uh, you can see that, that in this case, that didn't even budge the numbers. I mean, maybe a tiny bit. So it's, you know, usually you don't need to mess with that number too much, but it's there as an option for you. Um, probe history weight determines how much um, accumulation uh, you have over time uh, at each probe point. Uh, you know, in addition to uh, firing the number of rays per probe that you're, you're firing, it's also... Uh, uh, accumulating that um, data over time and, and temporarily including it in the result. So um, the smaller the number, um, uh, the, the faster the RTX GI updates, the more instant RTX GI will refresh, but it will, you'll lose a lot of stability. And, and so having this number, um, you, you, you don't want to set it too high or too low. Um, like I said, if you set it too low, uh, th then you lose a lot of stability. If you set it too high, it'll just fail to update. Um, so as an example, I can just show you if I set it to 0.5, you'll see that um, we start to get some flickering noise, right? Because it's, um, it's updating much faster than before, but uh, it's not considering um, the, uh, the history uh, of each probe, like the, the previously accumulated data. And conversely, I could, um, well, if I set it to a value of, of one, uh, it would literally fail to update. It'll just never refresh. Um, so we find the 0.97 is a good starting value. Um, you know, in, in practical usage, you might be able to drop it down to 0.9. Um, there's no, there's no literal right, right or wrong number here. Um, you just got to see uh, what looks good in your scene and how important is it to you to have uh, uh, faster GI refreshes. Probe relocation recovered, there's a flag for that. Um, and uh, a couple of values to determine um, uh, at what point it makes its determination to do its relocation. Scroll probes infinitely, this is, uh, it's, this feature uh, is, is called uh, infinite scrolling volumes or ISV for short. Um, and this allows you to have GI anywhere and everywhere. Um, it, it makes your GI volume fully dynamic. Uh, so I'll explain this a little bit later on in more detail. Um, but the idea is that uh, you, it allows you to take a volume and, uh, say, attach it to a camera or to a player. And wherever that player goes, uh, this GI volume will go with him. And uh, that way, we, we're not concerned so much about uh, placing GI just in one particular location or, you know, stretching a, a giant volume across an entire map. Um, I, we can place a volume around a player and have that volume move with him and uh, we get infinite GI everywhere. 
So it's just a it's a very performant way to do that. Uh, as of today, it's still a, a late beta feature, uh, but this is coming online and we have the option available to you now so you can uh, get a sense of it and uh, begin to understand uh, how it can work for you. We have the option, of course, to visualize probes. Here we have some, some fine tuning controls on how probes are encoded. Um, uh, you'll, you'll find that the defaults tend to be very good and you don't need to adjust these numbers too much, or at least the defaults tend to be really good. So you might want to just uh, leave them as is. Now under the lighting tab, we have uh, use skylight on Ramus. Uh, this basically just describes whether or not to use the, um, uh, uh, the uh, raster uh, skylight actor in the RTX GI contribution. These bias controls here can be useful if your uh, GI is especially uh, spaced out or even uh, very compressed in distance. So if we use this one spot in the center of my screen as an example, you'll see that there's a little bit of um, uh, soft shadow uh, being created by RTX GI. And uh, it's actually view biasing that result. So certain angles, you might notice that it shifts ever so slightly, right? As I move back and forth, you can see that very slight shift in, in the shadow result. Uh, but you might find that you want to shift the results a little bit. So I could say, uh, uh, give me a slightly different uh, bias value. Uh, maybe I find that a value of 60 works better than a value of 40. Um, You know, or the default might be best. Uh, normal bias is just uh, sort of another version of the same thing, although it does it, it tends to have less impact. Um, and uh, you you may find that tweaking the the value um, doesn't like strongly impact the scene, or at least as much as you think it would. So leaving that at the default might be best. Um, but you might find that adjusting view bias, basically you're biasing how the GI is being applied into the scene. Um, uh, could give you uh, slightly better results, slightly more ideal results. And you just have to look at that sort of case by case. Uh, if, you're, if you're feeling like your GI is not um, applying into the scene as, much, as correctly as you want, um, you may want to adjust that view bias value. Uh, now, uh, these next two values are probably going to be very easily understood. This is your light multiplier and emissive multiplier. So if I just, this is very simple. If I want to uh, 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 artificially inflate, if I want to inflate the uh, GI result, I can just, you know, make this a two instead of a one. Or if I wanted to uh, bring the value down, I could make it 0.2. And now I, I don't have much GI contributing. You know, you can set it to any arbitrary value here. I've made it a 10. So GI is kind of over, overwhelming my scene. Yeah, you can set that to anything you want. Uh, emissive multiplier does the same thing, but just for emissive uh, sources. Uh, so since I don't have anything emissive in this particular scene, uh, it's it's not going to uh, change the result any. 10-bit irradiance scalar is kind of a complex idea and deserves some explanation. This has to do with how RTX GI achieves its results. So what is RTX GI doing? It's it's uh, from probe points, it's, it's uh, firing GI rays into the scene uh, that, that creates a, a texture sample that is then reprojected back into the world. The question becomes, what do we do with that texture sample? Um, how many bits is it? Things like this. So you have control over that. If you go into your project settings, for example, um, and go to RTX GI, you can see that you can set the irradiance bits uh, from 10-bit uh, to 32-bit. So it'll take a moment to update. Now, 32-bit uh, irradiance textures are going to be three times the file size, three times the size in memory over a 10-bit texture. And in the vast majority of cases, uh, 90 some percentile of cases, it's not going to give you any better result than a, than a 10 bit texture. Um, the reason why we include the option is so that you can see what the uncompressed results uh, can and should look like. Now, uh, this, this 10 bit irradiance scaler won't have any effect 
if I'm in 32-bit mode. The reason why this value exists is so that I can adjust my 10-bit texture to be more in line with the 32-bit result. So we can we can look at the scene, you know, in 32-bit, this is the uh, sort of the uncompressed uh, uh, raw texture result for GI, if you will. Um, and, you know, we can see all the uh, all the uh, the subtlety in the color that that 32 bits gives us. Okay, so let me put it back to 10 bit. 10 bit being the default, of course. Um, uh, you know, and if you're interested in uh, real time performance, you want to keep it in 10 bit. And let's set the 10 bit irradiance scaler back to its default 1.0. Okay, so uh, we're in in 10 bit mode. Um, and our radiant scaler is at a value of one. This number, by the way, ranges from 1.0 all the way down to 0 0.001. That's the smallest you can go with it. Um, and it, all we're doing is, like I said, we're, we're um, offsetting um, how the 10-bit uh, texture is uh, stored in order to uh, get it as close and accurate to the uncompressed 32-bit result as possible. So you might notice that in 10-bit mode, with the Uranium Scaler set to 1.0, you, you might lose a little bit of color. It just doesn't, it might feel a little bit more flat. And to get closer to the 32-bit result, again, you can directly compare. You can say, let's look at 32-bit again. I, I just feel like I might be getting a little bit more color out of certain areas in 32-bit than 10-bit, right? The, the, the differences are, are subtle, but, but there. So by shifting the irradiant, the irradiant scalar to some uh, number less than one, it, it essentially gets it closer to the 32-bit result. So typically, uh, I find some value, maybe like a 0.1 or a 0.05, or, or you might even go lower than that. Uh, you can, I mean, you can try like a 0.01, but at some point it starts to feel uh, almost too exaggerated. Like you take it down to the uh, lowest possible value. And you can see that in some in some places it it may feel like it pumped the color up slightly, uh, and that just has to do with the the the, the stored texture is just is well the, the texture is just being stored a little bit differently. So uh, usually uh, fine tuning the value a little bit, setting it to something like a 0.1 uh, will give you a result um, that is much closer to 32-bit uncompressed textures, and uh, it'll do it. At, you know, one third the memory cost and uh, much faster performance uh, in the encoding of the textures. So uh, that's that's what this controls. I know that's kind of complex and long-winded on what it's doing, but by uh, setting your scene to 32-bit mode, seeing what how it should look if the RTX GI textures were 32-bit textures and what that result would be. That gives you a sense of what that that quality is. You can then change it to 10-bit mode, um, and then shift your irradiance scaler to get it to a result that will look very very close to 32-bit quality. It, it, you know, and it may be completely in, indiscernible to most people. That explains most of the details of a DDGI volume point by point. What else is there? Uh, if we go back to the project settings. And we look at RTX GI uh, under plugins. Um, there's this value for distance bits. This just determines, um, you know, if you've got a really large scene, you might need 32-bit uh, encoding for distant uh, uh, probes and volumes uh, to make sure that they're, um, you know, uh, being uh, set in the scene correctly. Uh, you have a, a debug probe radius value, which, you know, we can we can look at. Uh, as we visualize our probes, you know, maybe I want these uh, probes to be half their size. Maybe I want them to be bigger. You know, you can uh, uh, set them to the value you want. Your RTXGI commands are all under r.rtxgi, ddgi. And you'll see that, you know, this one here, this top one, just enables it or disables it, right? That's another way to do that. And the other useful one to know is the lighting pass scale.